Badges are items that you compose which can be attached to your survivors. They grant a permanent passive boost to qualities like damage, health, damage resistance, critical chance and critical damage. And the right set of badges will significantly improve a character's overall performance in the game. But how do you get and use them? Well, you get them by collecting components and badge fragments, then combining those to form the badges, which you then can attach to your heroes as you see fit. How do you get the pieces that you need to build badges? Well, as you progress through the game, you eventually unlock two distinct buildings, the Scavenger and the Craftsman. As soon as you have those constructed in your base, you will be able to use badges. Once you have the scavenger, you'll notice that badge components and fragments become available as rewards in all game modes. There are four different types of components of different quality and they're all put into a badge fragment to finish the crafting process. Different combinations of these individual pieces means that you can craft badges that will boost different things, damage, critical chance, etc. And use of higher quality pieces means a stronger chance of getting a more effective finished badge. That might all sound confusing, but I can take you through the crafting process and the game tells you exactly what you need to use to get exactly what you want when actually making the badges. So don't worry. For the meantime, just hoover up any and all badge fragments you can from crates, last stand rewards, distance runs, and so on. So once you've acquired some components and an actual badge fragment, how do you put it all together? Visit the Craftsman and click on that gold tool icon. You can make badges, see a complete inventory of components that you have available, and also see the badges that you've already completed that are awaiting use. To craft, first put the actual badge fragment in the slot. Then click on four empty component slots. If you want to know what component to use to get what effect, click on the recipes. If you need a quick overview of anything badgy, check out the Learn More. It's a pretty concise and helpful guide to it all. Once you've got everything filled in, click Create. You'll use a meager amount of resources and voila, a badge is crafted. There's always a little luck involved, so there's a slight chance that the effect and rarity won't be exactly as expected, but use higher quality components and follow the exact recipe and the chances are greater that you will get what you're after. To assign your badges, go to the Survivor tab, select a character, and click Badges beneath the Traits tab. There are six spaces in which you can slot a badge, and you can have up to three badges of any effect on any one character, meaning that you can apply a variety of boosts, or just boost two things to the max. You can filter badges by effect, and or by set. The set means the shape of the badges, as you may notice that they're spiky, round, hexagonal, targety, or that shape. You're free to apply badges however you wish, but using as many of the same shape is the most effective. Four or more badges of the same shape increases each individual badge's effect to a small degree. It costs nothing to add a badge to an empty slot, but removing badges or swapping them out for another costs 15 gold every time. As far as badges go, that's pretty much it. Acquire components and fragments through normal play and keep an eye out for events that will net you more quickly. Make what you need and stick them on a character to get an instant boost to effectiveness. There are a few tips that will help you make the most of these powerful things though. First up, I would suggest just making damage and critical damage badges. At very high levels, you need any and all boosts to damage output that you can get. And it's really only charge attacks with their very much improved hurtiness and special effects that will have any real effect on your target anyway. You have virtually no chance of getting critical hits with standard attacks, no matter how much you boost the chance. Similarly, while health and damage resistance might seem like natural additions for bruisers, and they certainly are up to a point, you will, at very high difficulties, have your green health bar be reduced to red with one hit no matter how much you try and buff your resilience. Start badging up your best characters first. I recommend Sasha, Mercer, Yumiko, Tyrese, Connie and Outlaw Negan, but feel free to chuck anything on anyone if you reckon it'll help. You can always swap those badges out later. A word on that by the way, keep an eye out for free badge removal events. This does what it says, you can swap and remove badges as you please without having to incur the 15 gold charge. 
you can max out the number of badges that you have, you can only store so many, so you may want to eventually scrap the overflow. If you activate a double XP boost, maybe one of those double XP for 30 minute ones from the trade goods store, you'll suddenly have a very nice pot to spend on gear and survivors after a good scrapping session. Oh yeah, this goes for scrapping excess weapons and armor too. Activate a double XP before you do it. At the time of recording, some new aspects like heirlooms have been added. They sound similar to badges, a permanent passive boost to your characters, but badges are sure to stay. Be sure to use them to get ahead. If you have any questions, please do let me know. And in the meantime, thank you very much for watching.